Hello and welcome to Galaxy Advisors. The purpose of this video is to provide you some background about social network analysis, fundamentally the basics. Our topics are really four. Uh, first, a very brief history of social network analysis, some fundamental basic vocabulary, and some references to some professional associations, and then finally some additional reading that you might uh, be interested in, in taking on. First of all, a brief history of social network analysis is really none better than Lint Freeman's The Development of Social Network Analysis. So here's the links. Um, highly recommend this. This provides um, kind of a background of how the profession started, who were the key players, institutions, and how finally it really kind of developed up to the um, 21st century here. Uh, fundamentally, the brief history is that social network analysis is multidisciplinary, um, starting often in anthropology, uh, looking at the anthropologists, looking at kinship relations, who married whom, who was descended, and so on. So these were really the early um, pioneers in social network analysis and starting off in kinship maps. Uh, sociology, uh, mathematics, communication, physics, computer science are all um, now are very much um, active in social network analysis. So it's very multidisciplinary. So let's take a look at some of the basic vocabulary and concepts to, that you really need to understand social network analysis to really use Condor quite effectively. Um, first, you know, as it mentions multidimensional, so you really kind of have this Tower of Babel. Uh, here I have kind of a circle, a green circle, or you represent by a node or a line, which is called a link, and you say these are the two fundamental elements of social network analysis. Could not get more basic, right? Well, let's see how, what happens when you start putting words on these symbols. Uh, traditionally, it's called a node or a link. Okay, that's pretty easy. Uh, then you can also call it from mathematical terms rather than a node, a vertex or vertice. You could call that line an edge, you could call it a tie, or you could call it an arc. So you can see right away that if you're starting to read things and people are referring to a link as an edge or a tie or an arc, you might get confused. So fundamentally, these are the basic vocabulary of the two principal items, a node and a link. Now, if we think about it from Condor's point of view, Condor, that node, is represented in the chars or characters table if you use Navicat. So for email, a node is a person's mail address. A web, uh, you're looking at a URL. A Wikipedia it could be an article or a URL. Twitter, it's your Twitter name. Facebook, your Facebook name. For the video searching, um, you could see it's a URL or an HTTP. So these are all basically nodes um, that um, Condor is using across these multiple um, possible resources. Now a link, a link for Condor is in the links table or it could be in two tables, a com table which represents the from and the com target which represents the to. So an email, you have uh, someone sending an email from someone to someone is going the from is going to be located in the com table and the to is in, located in the com target. Web could be from this web page to that web page and that's located in the links table. Wikipedia could be from this article to this article or it could be from this article to this other URL. In Twitter it's really from you know from this person tweeting to that person. Facebook, you're friending from this person to that person, represented in the links table. And then the video, again, is from this URL to this URL. So you get a feel for the node and links. Now, if you use Navicat and you go click on one of the Condor databases, for example, the Enron Small, you're going to see tables. Well, the chars table is the node. The from link is in the com table. The to is in the com target. And Telemed, which represented one of the um, websites, you could see the chars are going to be the URLs and the links are going to be in the link table which is going to be from this link to this link. So that's the connection there. Now a couple other things. A link can be undirected or versus directed. And undirected when people talk about that, basically there's no arrows on it. It just assumes that A is connected to B and B is connected to um, A. Directed though, it really makes it explicit. It says this node is connected to that node or I emailed 
someone else from me to that person then from that person back to me now condor uses only directed links so that way we always have know the directionality of where that link direction um, is from to now there's something called reciprocated links so if this green represented could be an email if I emailed someone and said the blue that's from me to them and it's reciprocated if the blue person sends back an email back to me so that's what you called a reciprocated link an unreciprocated link is I send somebody an email and they never replied or my web page is connected to this web page but this web page is not connected back to mine or I have a Wikipedia article. I I made a link, an internal link to Wikipedia to this other article, but there's no uh, that article that I made a link to doesn't refer back to my article page. That would be an unreciprocated link. And you'll see that in Wiki Search, um, there is um, an option there for collecting reciprocated uh, links. So again, a reciprocated link is from this to that, and it's reciprocated by the other um, party. So now let's uh, look at some basic network measures. Again, still in our fundamental vocabulary. We're going to look at these six different measures. For degree, a degree is the count of the number of ties to other actors in a network. For example, in degree is the count of the number of ties directed to a node, or we'd say popularity. So I have the green node, uh, could be yourself, and you have two other people represented by the um, blue and orange, and they, let's say in this case, have sent me an email, or has sent me a request, or tweeted, sent a tweet to me. Now, out degree is the number of ties that a node directs to others. You could call it gregariousness. So here, uh, the green node has sent an outward link to the blue node. Now density is another network measure. In mathematical terms, a dense graph is a graph in which the number of edges is close to the maximum number of edges. So in this case we have three nodes and you could say each link there goes two ways or is reciprocated. Or there are six actual possible um, uh, links going on here divided by six possible so the the density of this uh, elementary uh, graph would be one six divided by six for a possible one now a graph with only a few edges is called a sparse graph so in this case the same three nodes there's only uh, one link you might say with two directions or two actual divided by six possible links in this graph or has a density of 0.33 so this again is a very kind of fundamental and especially if you think about it, if you get a large number of nodes it's very unusual to have every node connected to every other node you think of a large global organization with thousands of employees usually you don't have all it's not a thousand to a thousand but just a few now a bridge is another network measure and an edge is said to be a bridge if deleting it would cause its endpoints to lie in different components of the graph so here highlighted in red if I are the six bridge links so if I remove these six red links then the those graphs would be disconnected now another measure in cent uh, centrality is very fundamental in social network analysis and this measure gives a rough indication of the social power of a node based upon well they connect the network so between this and degree are all measures of centrality so if we look at this um, graph here of these nodes and links the blue node is obviously in the middle or is highly connected or very between all the other nodes so they would have a high amount of betweenness uh, betweenness then is the extent to which a node lies between other nodes in the network and so if you look at this graph uh, here those blue nodes are highly central there are almost you can go through that blue node to get to almost any other node those nodes that are in the green and then finally on the red are don't have very much betweenness so in often in Condor there's often um, an automatic calculation of the between the centrality so if you have a node that has a high amount of betweenness you this gives you a visualization that they're very much in between or at the center of the network 
Now, another important concept in social network analysis triads, and that is a group of three. The fundamental unit of communication is not necessarily the diet, but three are a triad. And there are 16 possible combinations of three-person communication, you might say. The very upper left is the three yellow nodes where no one's connected. And then the far right, you can see our three nodes that are each have reciprocal connections or it's a complete connection. Uh, this is uh, one of the um, uh, naming convention, what's called MAN, which is uh, mutual, asymmetrical, and null. So the first uh, number represents a number of mutual connections. The next number represents the number of asymmetrical and the third number represents the number of null with a letter distinguishing between those that could have possible the same combination. So in the upper left in 003 is no mutual, no uh, asymmetrical and three null. In the bottom right uh, in contrast is 300 where it represents three uh, mutual or reciprocated nodes. So, come back to network analysis. Very simple, right? One node <laughs> and a line can be kind of complex with a number, of, but those are really the fundamental um, vocabulary that we're going to be using and is very extensive used in um, Condor. So, um, given that, there are some other professional associations you're interested in social network analysis. One of the oldest is the INSNA, or International Network for Social Network Analysis. It's available at www.insta.org. They have an annual conference and number of publications, number of software, and a very resourceful website. The, also, I'd like to bring your attention to the Collaborative Innovation Networks Conference. The, there have been three in uh, 2009, 10, and the last one was held in Basel, Switzerland. And you can go see the results of the COINS Conference at coinsconference.org. Uh, finally, there's a number of references uh, or other additional reading or books. Of course, there's the three, uh, the trilogy by Peter Gluer, Swarm Creativity, followed by Cool Hunting, and the latest in Cool Farming, which has many examples of the use of condor you know, throughout these three books. Uh, fundamentally, there are some other three new, uh, actually relatively basic introduction to social network analysis. You have the Network, the New Social Operating System by Lee Rain and Barry Wellman, which this book kind of gives you an idea of the internet, the social networking, and the mobile revolution all mixed together and kind of talks to you about using the Pew uh, Center research uh, since for the about past decade about how the United States and North America have changed in becoming a networked part of the networked world. Understanding Social Networks, um, Theories, Concepts, and Findings by Charles um, Kudushin um, really um, summarizes the basics as well as what we've learned from social network analysis. The Social Network Analysis by Christina Prell is also an introductory text and uh, she provides um, kind of a working uh, one using the UCI Net software as an example throughout the book. A more college level text is Networks and Introduction by uh, Newman at the University of Michigan with a special emphasis on the formulas that are behind uh, those network measures. Uh, there's other uh, handy reference again the the development of social network analysis by Lynn Freeman is a great uh, introduction of the um, kind of who's who in the profession and universities, how it got started, the multidisciplinary nature of the social network analysis. Social network analysis uh, methods and applications is really kind of the really fundamental reference text uh, that people use by uh, Stan Wasserman and um, Cotty Foss. Uh, then you have introduction to social networks. Um, which is also a, a fundamental um, introduction book as well. Um, theory books, uh, there's three here, uh, especially Manji and Contractor um, take you through a number of the multi-level, uh, multi-analysis, uh, multi-theories that have come about in the last um, several decades. And Tom Valenti and Network Models of Diffusion of, of Innovations follows up on Everett Rogers' work, especially looking at network models. Um, there's popular reading here, The Six Degrees, Emergent Link, and Nexus. Um, other popular reading, The Tipping Point by Mal Malcolm Gladwell, and The Hidden Power of Social Networks by Bob Cross and Andrew Parker. So plenty of, of reading here in the area of social networks.
So I hope this provides you some basics uh, with um, social network analysis, the terminology, um, some references, and professional associations. Welcome to the world of social network analysis.